Okay, so let's go ahead and do another confidence interval example. So here we've got that Janet is working at a factory and is wondering what the true proportions of defects they have. She's only willing uh, to have her confidence interval not capture uh, the true proportion 5% of the time. Okay, so our first question needs to be, are we dealing with numeric or categorical data? And when we look at this, we are dealing with categorical data. We're just trying to see if, um, if it's a pass or a defect. Uh, so we're not measuring like a weight or a time or a speed. We're dealing with categories. So we're dealing with categorical data. Okay, so our confidence interval then is confidence interval at a specific, at a specific confidence level is going to be equal to p hat plus or minus. We're going to do a z critical, which we need to know alpha divided by 2. And then we are going to multiply that by the square root of p hat times 1 minus p, p hat and divide by n. Okay, so remember that this z critical alpha divided by 2, maybe I can put those in brackets or something like that, something a little different, that those are really just a subscript. I've written them out before uh, on the whiteboard. Um, but like typing them in, it's a little tricky. Anyhow, so that's Z critical. And let's go through and figure out each and all of our parts. So the first thing we want to do is we want to know what our confidence level is. Now, if we look at our question, we actually don't have a confidence level. Instead, what we are given is our alpha. She's only willing, so Janet's only willing to have her confidence interval not capture the true proportion 5% of the time. That is alpha, 0.05. So to find the confidence level, we can just say that's equal to 1 minus alpha. So we've got a 95% confidence level. Alpha is that, and let's do an alpha divided by 2, alpha divided by 2, and then we can just say alpha divided by 2. Okay, so now we need to get some information from our data. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload um, or import this data. So I'm going to go back to our commander, data, import data, we'll say from Excel file. I'm going to call this defects. And I'm going to click OK. And we will grab these from, oh, uh, yes, we'll grab that. Open it up. And this one is on sheet two. I'll click OK. Let's view the data set. And yes, we're looking at our passes and our defects. Great. Close out of there. Okay, so let's go and get our statistics that we need. Let's go to statistics. Let's do summaries. Um, and let's do active data set. Here we go. Click. All right, so we've got the number of defects and the number of passes. Uh, let's see if we can't grab some more statistics real quick. Uh, frequency distributions. Let's see if that'll work for us. Okay, well, now we, we've got our counts and we've got our percentages of each, so that's nice. So we know that, uh, let's get our sample size first. N equals, so for us it's going to be this 55 plus 240 to get our sample size. We could say equals 55 plus 4, sorry, 420. And it enters, so we've got 475. And then p hat, we are really interested in the number of defects, the proportion of defects. So what we would need to do is then say equal our 55 divided by our sample size. And that gives us our 11.58, which is what we've got over here as well. So we're good. All right, so I think now we've got the pieces of information that we want. Let's go ahead and calculate out our standard error. We can do that with our p hat. This is going to be equal to the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n. And that is our standard error. So now we need to go ahead and find our z critical. All right, so let's go over to our commander, 
distributions. We're dealing with a Z critical, so we're, we can go use our normal distribution, go to normal quantiles, and now we need their probability. So we need to shove in, in this bracket, it says alpha divided by 2. Great. We can do 0 0.025, because that's our alpha divided by 2. And we'll click OK. And let's go ahead and highlight this, copy it, and bring it over. And that's the number of standard deviations that we are interested in. So now let's do plus or minus. So we can do confidence interval, uh, and we'll do low, and then confidence interval high. All right, so the low is just going to be equal to p hat minus z critical times the standard error. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and hit enter. I want to come down and paste it, and I am going to add. Okay, and I'm going to hit enter as well. Okay, so one thing that I actually forgot to do, like way at the beginning, I should have done, I should have checked, like, do I even have a big enough sample to do this? Remember, like, we need a big enough sample. We are, we generally say that it's 15 yeses and 15 noes. If we go over and look at the defects and the passes, we do have a large enough sample size to actually be able to use this uh, normal approximation of how the sample proportions are going to be distributed. All right, so I've got the high and I've got the low. And now I just need to write a confidence interval statement. So I can say that we are 95% confident that the true, okay, so now I need to talk about, what am I talking about? I'm talking about the true proportion, proportion of defects in this factory is somewhere between We'll do 0 0.087 and 0 0.145. Okay, that was nice and easy. We're 95% confident. Okay, what are we interested in? The true proportion of defects where in this or in this factory, and maybe it'd be better to say in Janet's factory. Janet's factory is somewhere between like you know. If we wanted to, we could even write these in percents. But decimal form is fine too. 0 0.087 and 0 0.145. Okay, so um, we know that this is a two-tailed uh, proportion. So let's uh, let's go look at that, like why this is two-tailed. So let's go look at normal distribution and let's plot this thing. We'll have the it be from 0 and 1, we're going to do the quantiles, and I'm going to go from 0 0.025 to 0.975. This color's terrible. That one's better. OK, and OK, and here's the plot that I was given. OK, so we've got that this distribution we threw, uh, we threw 2.5% of the error on one side, 2.5% of the error on the other side. And so then we can say that we are 95% confident that the true proportion is somewhere between these values. Um, I hope that that helps you out. Good luck.